The finale of House of the Dragon masterfully echoed the show's earliest episodes, while also improving one of the most impressive sets in Game of Thrones history. Throughout Season 1, the Painted Table of Dragonstone has made brief but uneventful appearances. This is the very same table around which Stannis Baratheon and later Daenerys Targaryen draw up their battle plans in Game of Thrones. Conquering Westeros would be easy for you, but you're not here to be Queen of the Ashes. Rhaenyra expresses a similar wish in the finale while standing around the same table. I do not wish to rule over a kingdom of ash and bone. We know from the books that the table which doubles as a map of Westeros was commissioned by none other than King Aegon I himself before his conquest, which is why it's in Dragonstone instead of King's Landing. Many fans considered it one of the coolest pieces of set design in the screen adaptations of Martin's world, and that's before we knew it could be illuminated. Apparently, the instruction manual got lost sometime in between The Dance of the Dragons and Robert's Rebellion, as no one in Game of Thrones seemed to know about the table's awesome light-up feature. If you experienced deja vu when Otto arrived with his envoy at Dragonstone, that was intentional. The hand of King Aegon II arrives unannounced to offer Rhaenyra terms. Daemon is there waiting with guards who are loyal to the Blacks, but Otto says he's under strict instructions to only deliver Queen Alicent's message to Princess Rhaenyra. The Black Queen flies in on the back of Cyrax and lands on the bridge behind the Green Party. She dismounts, then positions herself in between Daemon and Otto. The two men are hoping for war, Daemon outwardly so. Otto is clearly hoping for an escalation on the rogue prince's part, so he has justification to kill them all and stymie any challenge to his grandson. It's left to Rhaenyra again to force cooler heads to prevail. She's angry enough that her birthright has been stolen to toss Otto's pin into the water below, but after he shows her Alicent's message, she's steady enough to tell him she'll give her an answer the following day. King's Landing will have my answer on the morrow. The scene is a callback to House of the Dragon Episode 2, in which Otto sails to Dragonstone to confront Daemon about his seizure of what's supposed to be the heir's seat. Back then, a teenage Rhaenyra landed Cyrax in almost exactly the same spot and walked to almost exactly the same place between who was then just her uncle and her father's vulture of a hand. But during that debacle, her back was turned to Otto while she dealt with Daemon. In Episode 10, her back is to her husband as she tries to outwit the engineer of the coup against her. Alicent Hightower doesn't show up in episode 10, but it's clear she thinks she has an ace up her sleeve. Before Rhaenyra gives Otto her non-answer, he hands her a folded-up piece of paper and lets her know that the queen has not forgotten the love they once had for each other. As her envoy, Otto insists that Alicent wants to avoid bloodshed and broker peace. Rhaenyra opens up what viewers might have expected to be a handwritten message. Instead, we see an illustrated page from a history textbook. This is the page that a very young Rhaenyra tore out of the book when she was supposed to be studying with Alicent at the Septa's behest. Alicent's token of affection is also shrewd statecraft. That she kept the page is meant to show her friend-turned-enemy that she has been pining for what they once had all these years, but she's also hoping the ploy works in the Greens' favor. It's significant that the entry is about Nymeria, a woman who ruled alongside her husband and who brought her people together. It's also symbolic that in their youth, a willful Rhaenyra ripped out the page and gave it to an obedient Alicent, while as mothers, a bolder Alicent returns the page to a Rhaenyra who's worried about duty and honor. In discussing their path forward, Queen Rhaenyra tells the Black Council that she wants to know who her allies are before she sends people to war in her name. Her loyalists assure her some houses, like Celtigar, can be depended upon for support, but the fealty of houses who swore oaths long ago will have to be reaffirmed. Chief among these are houses Tully, Aaron, Stark, and Baratheon. We know how that last one panned out, but the Blacks' efforts to secure alliances with the other three will likely be the order of business in Season 2. That means we'll probably be meeting the ancestors of the Tullys, Starks, and Aarons and visiting these iconic Game of Thrones locations. Technically, it'll be the show's second visit to the Vale, as we did get a brief stop over there when Daemon knocked off Rhea Royce. We can't say if the dragon fight happens in the show as it does in Fire and Blood. It's a stormy night in both versions, which makes it hard for onlookers to see in written accounts. What everyone agrees upon is that Aemond didn't fly to Storm's End with the intent to kill Luke, and that all anyone saw was two dragons tangling in a fury of fire and lightning. 
House of the Dragon renders Aemon's kinslaying of Luke as something closer to manslaughter than murder. When they jump on the backs of their dragons, Luke and Aemon both speak to their mounts in High Valyrian. Though the one-eyed prince's evil laughter and his insistence that Luke owes him a debt suggest otherwise, once Arax sprays Vagar in the face with flames, Aemon tries to put on the brakes. He screams Dohyrus at Vagar, who chomps down on poor Luke and Arax anyway. The word Dohyrus might sound familiar to Game of Thrones fans. Valar Morgulis. Valar Dohyrus. Valar Duhiris is a common phrase used in Essos, which translates to all men must serve, often said in conjunction with Valar Morgulis, which means all men must die. It's also the title of the first episode of season three of Game of Thrones. For the purposes of House of the Dragon, that two royal boys can't get their dragons to Dohiris indicates Viserys was right. There are power men should never have trifled with.